Hello everyone and welcome to the start of my new Pixelmon series that I've been planning for so long. Okay, so before we can actually get into the world, I need to pick my starter here and I've given you a lot of thought to it. And pretty much I like 3rd gen and 4th gen stars the best. And Trico I don't want to pick just because he doesn't have the best move set, especially in Pixelmon where it's hard to get TMs. Torchic I would consider, but uh, Blazikens I feel a bit strong and overused at times, also it's hard to train fire types and picks them on. I would like Primplup or Tortrig. Chimchar, I think someone else is probably going to pick. But overall, I think I'm going to go with Mudkip just because I really do love the third gen ones. And Swampert's awesome. He has great typing and yeah, Mudkip. So here we are in my Pixelmon server after so much work and preparation and waiting for it. Finally here. Whew. So yeah, uh, here is the spawn town that I built, and yeah, let's go inside the Pokemon lab here, or Pixelmon lab, I should say, which has kind of, you're supposed to spawn here, but the world spawn doesn't always spawn on exactly, it spawns in a range of where you pick, so um, yeah, here. Okay, so it's kind of hard to think of where to begin exactly, but let's just start here. Welcome to the Pixelmon World server. This is a multiplayer server, and as such, I probably have a bit of lag because my connection still isn't the best, but some other people will be playing with me. I don't think any of them have been on the server yet. And here's the starting chest where you take one row of items to help us get started. You get 10 Pokeballs, 3 Great Brawls, 6 Potions, 2 Super Potions, 3 Revise, 5 Bread, a Wooden Axe, a Sharpening Kit, and a Crystal Wing. And I'll have to explain what some of that stuff is right now, actually. Okay, the first thing I think I should explain is uh, the food. If you notice, it says the mission returns, and if I hit shift over, it shows how much it restores. The food and then the saturation. And after three more foods, diminishing returns starts. And pretty much, you can also see that my uh, little hunger bar down there is a bit different as well. And that's because uh, I, there's a mod, the Spices of Life, which makes it so the more you eat of a food, the less effective it is. So you have to eat a variety of different foods so you can keep healing properly. So if you just try and eat only one food like fish, you're not going to restore pretty much anything, I think, after five fish. So yeah, it's to encourage a bit more variety in the diet because food is a bit of an issue in Pixelmon and I didn't want everyone just living off fish. So between the starting bread and the other foods you can get, it should be manageable. Also, if you didn't catch on, this place here is uh, based off Pallet Town and Generation 1. There really isn't much to the city and as you can see, the PC should be empty. There shouldn't be anything in here anyway. So yeah, and here's a healer, here's a printer from one of the other mods. Uh, I probably should note that this does use a custom mod pack, as you probably could tell by the fancy lights, the fancy bookshelves and floor, and the trash can and printer, and yeah. Anyway, I have a reminder here that no one's supposed to break blocks and spawn. And if you faint, you will be sent to the nearest town because I'm using the Safe Place mod. Pretty much what Safe Place does, if all your Pokemon faint, it teleports you to the nearest designated Safe Place, which is here as the only one at the moment, so we have to be sure not to faint. Also, there's an entrance to the Hall of Fame here, which is another feature of the server, which I'll go ahead and show you. It's actually a really cool looking room. It uses a Holy Stone from Chisel, I think this is Quartz and Quartz Stair, and Temple Blocks from Chisel, so uh, yeah. So, what is the Hall of Fame? Pretty much is a place on the server where we kind of honor people who get certain achievements like win the championship which i'll get to in a minute the first person to find and revive a fossil the first person to get a pixel to the max level 100 the first person to catch a legendary and the first person to catch a shiny there might be other ones added in the future but yeah those are the main ones for the moment so let me head back up and then i'll talk about some more of the stuff about the mod pack and continue on our adventure okay i probably should go over the rest of the stuff in the inventory most of it's pretty straightforward some starting supplies for the pokemon and a sharpening kit here that one probably not so much you can make it like this using steel and it's from the artifice mod steel can make a variety of different things they have different upgrades as well, and uh, there's also marker beacons, automatic crafting tables, fancy doors from uh, Malice's doors, like the sliding ones I came through, a whole tree axe, there's a uh, Jabba and better storage, and yeah, there's a lot of mods, there's a link to the mod list in the description if you just want to see all of them. And uh, yeah, this is a spawn town. Also, this is a crystal wing, which will teleport me to the spawn, but only has three uses, or my spawn point, so when I get a bed it will work for that too. 
if we come over here, you'll see there's a small apricot form, or apricot, apricorn, whatever, ah, words. Eh, as I was trying to say, apricorn farm, yes, that's what this is. It's a pretty much a starting apricorn farm, so people can get some apricorns to start their own farms and make some pokeballs or such, because they can be quite hard to find. So, uh, yeah, now that I got them, let's head over and check out the rest of spawn. Over here, we have the hero's house. No, this isn't your house. So, uh, yeah, in here, it uses a lot of the stuff from the Crayfish Furniture Mod, just for cosmetics, really, just so the town wasn't just spawned, pretty much. And there's a bed here, but, well, I can't really take that, and it's not much different than spawning in there. So, uh, gotta love that fancy door opening, close animation for Mouse's doors, though. And also, there's one thing cool over here. A Pokeball from Pokeloot. So when I right-click it, I'll get some loot, but they don't disappear and no one else can get it. So let's see what I get. A Nest Ball. Well, I guess that's not the worst thing. I mean, a Nest Ball can be pretty useful, just not right now. The Rival's House is pretty much just a copy of that one. And over here... Danger! Pick some on live in tall grass. Not really. Because... They're right there. So, if we come out through here... We're just out of spawn in the open world now, so yeah, let's start exploring. Okay, I really want to try and kill one of these milk tanks because I really need leather. And, oh god. Like I said, I have a bit of lag which can make initiating battles a bit hard at times because they'll just walk just to the side of where I threw my Pokeball. Okay, I got in a battle with milk tank. Now, uh, the starter is level 10 because I felt... Level 5 was a bit hard to train up, so I raised it level 10, and that also gives us our first stab move. In this case, actually, we get Mud Slap and Water Gun. I'm gonna go for the Water Gun go, because I'm not ground type yet, and... Okay, I took a bit of damage, and so did it. Uh, I'm not sure who hits first. Okay, Mill Tank's using the Defense Girl, so I'm pretty sure I got this. Woohoo, I got a Raw Beef and a Leather, and I leveled up. I'm not sure how much training I'm gonna end up doing on camera. And I think I'm going to run back real quick and heal. But yeah, I'm not sure how much training I'm going to do on camera. I'm going to try and do a good bit off camera, but we'll see. And it seems some of these apricorns already regrew, so I'm just going to take them because no one else is here to take them at the moment. And also, uh, I don't have a mini-map because there aren't many updated to 1.7, and I am on the 1.7 Pixelmon and all the mods 1.7. So uh, yeah, I have the... In-game info mod to have some info. I'm not sure how well you can see it though, but mainly for me to see stuff. So, hmm, wasn't there another mill tank around here somewhere? Also, if you look down at my hunger bar, you can see, you probably can't see too well, but there's pretty much a little gray thing behind the bar, which shows how much exhaustion I have. Pretty much when you run around, jump and such, it accumulates it, and once it fills up by where my experience would be, or my level, it takes away one hunger or saturation, and saturation is a little uh, gold one around it. Pretty cool system, actually. Okay, well, I can't seem to find the other mill tank, but the reason I ran the leather was because it makes some cool things, mainly the backpack, which is going to be super helpful because it's kind of a safe place to store things because it's all my person, and the backpack will drop if I die so my items don't go everywhere, and, uh, yeah, carrying more stuff is useful. It's also used for more of these upgrades, which I... For Got to explain how they work. Pretty much, if I craft it, I could just show you here. It will apply sharpness 1, because it does sharpness or efficiency. Actually, it's kind of interesting. It didn't do efficiency for the axe and went with sharpness, and I probably just butchered that word somehow. But if I had three of them, I could up it all the way to uh, efficiency or sharpness 3. So, yeah. Anyway, it's turning night now, and there's a lava pit down here, which ironically was my initial spawn location when I first loaded the world. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and look around a bit get some wood, and then decide what to do next. Okay, I gave it a bit of thought, and I think I want to train a bit more before I do anything else, because I only have one Pokemon, and if it faints, I'll end up back at spawn, so I don't think I'm ready to go exploring, find a base, or whatnot. I do have a good idea where I want to build some of my stuff, though, which is down this way, and I forgot to mention more about the server. Okay, so pretty much the server has a few focuses. Besides just playing Pixelmon and exploring the mod pack, which does have some cool tech mods, which I'll get to once I set up a base, probably. It also does have a focus around uh, building your own towns and gyms and challenging other players. And eventually there'll be a championship, which is still kind of undecided how exactly it's going to work. But pretty much all the players interested in doing it will face off against each other to decide who the server champion is. But that's way down the road. And uh, yeah, for now though, I need to focus on getting 
more Pixamon, leveling up my team, and finding a place to make my temporary base before I start in the city because it's kind of hard to manage everything just from an inventory or even backpack without a place with chests and such. So I'd only need a temporary base and I can't seem to find any good Pixelmon. Maybe because it's night now? I'm not sure. Uh, pretty much there's a few other things I keep forgetting to mention. One, I just thought about swimming and remembered this. This is a Goki stat you might remember from Ascension. You do get experience from battling. And you can use experience to level up different things like faster swimming, more damage, faster mind speed, reduced damage, you know, different things like that. Also treasure hunter down here or down here, which lets you find some items when digging around different blocks like gravel, sand, dirt, whatnot, which would be kind of cool. And uh, yeah, also I probably should note the biomes near spawn. You saw the forest up there. There's a forest here and lots of plains around, but over there there's a savanna and a desert and there's pretty much a lot of savannas, deserts, plains and forests nearby. It was hard to find a taiga and uh, extreme hills. I know where they are because I did some flybys earlier when I was setting up the world just to load the chunks in advance so we didn't have a whole bunch of lag like that. Actually, I think that lag I just had might have been that or it's just my internet derping out for a second. Anyway, I really want to find more milk tanks because, uh, yeah, I don't think they spawn now. I think they only spawn the day... <sighs> Ooh, a tower. I had no idea there was one near here. Uh, there's some custom world gen, also designed by myself using a mod called My World Gen. So, uh, oh, I can't get in there though because I need a pickaxe. Darn. But there is some cool stuff in the tower if you know where to look, and since I built it, I know where to look. So, um, maybe I should get a pickaxe real quick. Ooh, a hidden chest. Okay, see those particles? That's a hidden chest, one you can't see. But when you mouse over, there's something there. So let's see what I get this time. I have no idea what it was because it was an item I already had, a potion. I had six, now I have seven. Ha, huh, I kind of wish those chests gave better loot because things like potions, in my opinion, should be common. At least you'd think they are. But yeah, this is a fancy cobblestone tower using uh, chiseled blocks. We have an iron door, which is why I can't get in at the moment. So uh, let me actually try and get a pickaxe real quick. And uh, yeah, then I'll try and break into the tower. Okay, so I got some stone spare and a stone pickaxe. Actually, I just realized I had enough stone to make a furnace, which I probably will need soon because my hunger is going down and I don't want to go through this bread too quickly. So, uh, yeah, it would be good to start eating some better food soon, which means I need to cook them. And a rattata gets in. I hate how you can't walk through Pixelmon like you can most other things in Minecraft. Anyway, I should be able to break down this door with my pickaxe. I have no idea why it gave me two iron doors, and what's a door factory? I had no idea what that block was. Okay, so pretty much this tower is a decayed ruin tower thing, and I will need to be careful as I climb up it and use some blocks to get around and make my way up. I actually might make this into like a temporary base thing. I think this is, yep, here's the chest. Okay, there's two different towers, sand and cobble. They have chests in different places. And what's in this? Wow, that, that's pretty good. We got 10 more Pokeballs, 3 more Ultra Balls, diamonds, iron, and more food. Okay, so I made it to the top of the tower, almost. And there we go. We're at the top of the tower now, which... Oh, for a second I thought I was going to fall in that hole. Pretty much there's nothing else here besides a ruined tower. I might make a temporary base here, like fix up the tower and do that. But, I don't know, I feel that's a bit unoriginal. So, uh, yeah, uh, we do have a bunch more Pokeballs now and some Ultra Balls. That was a very good chest to get at the start of the game. And I'm not sure why it gave me two Iron Doors when I broke the one. So, yeah. And uh, now it's day. We're at a Savannah biome. And uh, there's stuff over there in the desert, which I might want to head to train a bit, because there are some Pokemon in the desert I'm interested in catching. So, uh, let me just head back down the tower, and then we'll head and try and get my first Pokemon catch, or just some training. Okay, so I run into the desert, and what do I find right away? A Poke Chest. I kind of feel bad about taking all these, but, well, they are first come, first served, and I am first, so, uh, a Love Ball. I don't think anyone's going to be sad because they didn't get a Love Ball. Anyway, the Pokemon I want to catch is right here, so um, let's see how this goes. Okay, let's see what a water gun does. Not bad. If I hit it with another, it should be in the red. Or it will crit and kill it. There we go. 
so now if I go to my bag, I can use a Pokeball, Great Ball, or Ultra Ball. I think I'm just going to go for a Pokeball and hope it works. And I set Nas to spin because the spin camera seems more glitchy than standing in place at times. Either way, I don't think you can... Oh, I caught Trap Inch. Woohoo! So now I have two Pixelmon. Yeah. Okay, I think now's a good time to check out the stats of my Pokemon here, or Pixelmon, whatever you want to call them. So, pretty much, I have a hasty nature, raises speed, lowers defense. Probably not the best for Mudkip. It's a huge growth rate. That's pretty interesting. And we already know its moveset. Trap Pinch, on the other hand, is a lonely nature. Raises attack, lowers defense. That's not bad, because uh, Trap Pinch falls into Vibrana. I think that's how you pronounce that. Then Flygon. Flygon's one of my favorite Pokemon, and it's a physical attacker, which a lot of attack and speed. So, getting a nature, lonely, that buffs its attack is a good thing. It's also a huge Pokemon, and, oh wow, this has a pretty good moveset. Fain Attack, Bite, and Sand Tomb. And Sand Attack. Sand Attack's not really useful, though, but still, that's a pretty good moveset. And it doesn't have an ability yet. I think Flygon does have an ability, though, because it gets Levitate, and Levitate is in the game. But, yeah, it could always update by the time we get there anyway. And there are a couple mods or add-ons for the server that will let us see more about the Pixelmon here. So uh, let me just go and type in the command real quick. Okay, well this is kind of uh, technical stuff as far as Pokemon go, but they're Eevees and Ivies. Eevees, so I type in EV1, you can see what Eevees my Mudkip has. And it got two in defense. But pretty much you can get 252 in each stat, or in two stats, that's the max, and 510 total. And every four Eevees will be one point in that stat. So if we train on certain Pokemon, we'll get certain Eevees, so you can kind of manipulate them and only focus on the stats you want. Ivies, on the other hand, if I type in Ivies 1, we'll check Mudkip's Ivies, are just kind of like their genetics. They're fixed values you can never change. And wow, that's pretty impressive, actually. We got 29 attack and what was the other one? 29 special defense. Okay, so pretty much how IVs work, they range 0 to 31, 31 being the best you can get. And normally in Pokemon, you try and like breed to get perfect IVs if you want a really competitive Pokemon. But in Pixelmon, it's hard to do that kind of stuff because you can't breed. And trying to just catch wild Pokemon and get the right nature and the right IVs would take ages. So uh, trying to get a good nature and good IVs is kind of my goal, I guess. I don't want to get super competitive into this stuff because it's probably not that interesting to watch. But... Having 29 attack, with Mudkip being a physical attacker using the attack stat, that is pretty good. He's going to hit really hard. He's already a slow Pokemon, but overall I'd say he has pretty good IVs. Now let's check uh, Trap Inch. Okay, um, the interesting thing, Trap Inch here has 31 HP IV. He has a maxed IV. The chance of finding a wild Pokemon of that are very slim. The bad news, he has 29 special attack and he's a physical attacker. So it might be in my best interest to get another Trap Pinch with a bit better of stats. I don't know, I don't want to spend too long catching a whole bunch, but uh, I think we could catch another anyway. And I think I'm going to use a potion on Mudkip because... Uh, there we go. I don't want to faint, or I don't want him to faint, I should say. I wouldn't, but, uh, guess I have another Pokemon. Anyway, let's try and catch this Trap Pinch and see if this has a better moveset. Also, it's so small. Okay, weaken the Trap Pinch, and hopefully we'll catch in the Pokeball, or else Mudkip will faint. And that would be a bad way to continue this battle. There's a good chance he could break out, though, so, uh, okay, good, I caught him. So, let's check what this Trap Pinch has. Okay, this Trap Pinch actually has his ability, Hyper Cutter, and he is a careful nature. Lower special attack, raises special defense, which is fine because he didn't need special attack anyway, although I'd prefer it be an attack or speed that it buffs. And he's a runt, which is uh, interesting. He doesn't have faint attack, though, but does the other one have... Yeah, he got mud slap over faint attack, which isn't great, but we only really need bite. Okay, and his IVs are... Eh, still not that great. So, I don't know, I might try and just catch a bunch of Trap Inches off camera just to find out what their stats are. Actually, let's do something a bit daring. Here's level 34. Now, if I were to catch this, this would easily be the highest level Pokemon I have, but it's a good chance it's going to make me uh, faint and head back to spawn. So, um, it's probably going to outspeed me and one-shot me, so... Ultra Ball, let's just try and catch it right away without weakening it at all. 
<laughs> it worked. Okay, that was so cheap. Just to know, I said so you can't throw Pokeballs out of combat because just catching high level Pokemon without any risk is uh, a bit too overpowered in my opinion. But I still managed to do it, but I kind of had the risk of whiting out. So, uh, Lax Nature. Not bad. Uh, enormous growth. He has Bulldoze. That's awesome. So let's see what his IVs are. Okay, I swear I have the best worst luck. I got three perfect IVs, speed, special attack, and special defense, which is amazing if he was a special attacker, but his physical attack is only 10, which is kind of low. I'm still going to keep him because that's still pretty awesome, but I'm not sure if I'm done catching trap inches because I'd like a decent attack nature or IV because if you look at our mudkip here, it has a 29 attack and pretty good defenses, which is ideal for a Mudkip. So I'm kind of happy with that, but the trap pinches so far have been a bit of a letdown. And uh, what nature was Mudkip again? Eh, yeah, speed boosting one, not that great, but still, eh, it's something. Okay, I was eating some bread and I remembered another feature. When you mouse over food, it shows how much it heals. But yeah, I need to eat some bread because I'm running low on... Uh, foods there but now uh diminishing return comes into effect and my bread heals like nothing so i need to get another food source pronto and look at that there's a pokey center over here that we can go heal at so uh yeah i think i'm gonna head here and wrap up the episode but before i do that there's one other mod i'd like to use because you can only use it once a day and that's called wonder trade so since I have a bunch of spare trap pinches, I won't be using, and I think I'm just going to put the level 34 in the PC here. It's this one, so I'll just put it there. There we go. Anyway, since I have a couple spare trap pinches I'm not using, I can just wonder trade them and get a random Pokemon in return. I set it so you can only do this once a day, and in return, you'll get a random Pokemon level 1 to, I think, 20, so it wasn't too overpowered. So uh, let me just type in the commands and we'll start. Okay, I typed in Wonder Trade 2 to trade my second Pokemon. Now I'd have to throw WT to confirm and we get... Oh, that is amazing. Okay, Metangs are the evolution of Beldum. I don't think you can usually get on this low level. He is a careful nature. I think he's a physical attacker, so that's okay. And, uh, yeah, he's a Steel Psychic. What moves does he know? Metal Claw, Confusion, and Takedown. That's a pretty good move set. And, uh, what are his IVs? Okay, uh, once again, he has a lot more IVs in his special attack than normal attack, but they're not bad. Considering how hard it is to get Metangs, I think that's pretty good. So, um, yeah, actually, I think I'm gonna put this other Trap Pinch in the PC as well. Uh, actually, let me do it like this. Pokemon I'm going to Wonder Trade away go here. Pokemon I'm probably going to keep go here. And I'll keep these two in my party for now. Okay, well I think I'm going to call this episode here. I set down my chest so I can kind of make this a temp little outpost. And I'll work on doing some stuff off camera. Just some basic training. Maybe try and catch some more trap inches to get a good one I like. And uh, yeah, when I resume, hopefully I'll be able to explore around some more. And find a place to make my actual base. And uh, maybe get some more Pokemon on my team. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the start of this new series, and until next time, goodbye.